1979, the building and the beautiful theater purchased by the Walt Disney Company. Walt Disney Company did all the restoration on the theater too, inside and out. And that's the Walt Disney Company's flagship theater here in Hollywood. It's where they premiere all their movies. And sometimes they um, do a little uh, repeat. So um, they're going to be having a repeat of uh, Little Mermaid. And um, okay, we've got one day only for Pirates of the Caribbean. Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny. Uh, that's not doing so well. I thought it was going to do great, but no, it's kind of like, well, not as well as it, they thought it was going to do. So anyway, but this is still the Walt Disney Company's flagship theater. Now on the right hand side, this is the Dolby Theater here on the right. Dolby Theater, the 3400 seat performing arts theater, and since it opened in 2001, it's been the home of the Academy Awards. It's where the Oscar ceremonies happen here at this beautiful theater, the Dolby Theater. <laughs> Another famous theater coming up on the right hand side here. This is the Chinese Theater. The Chinese Theater opened in 1927. Built for Mr. Sid Grauman and known for many years as the Grauman's Chinese Theater. It's the only theater where you find the hand and footprints of the movie stars in the forecourt of this famous theater. In 2017, the Chinese Theater was purchased by a Chinese television company called The Creative Life, TCL for short. TCL did all the restoration on the theater, inside and out. On the inside, they did some remodels here too. Now, the TCL Chinese Theater is the world's largest IMAX theater. So now, Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny is on screen here, but in IMAX. Also up ahead here on the left-hand corner, a very famous hotel on Hollywood Boulevard here is the Roosevelt Hotel. The Roosevelt Hotel, Built in 1927, same year as the Chinese Theater. Very famous hotel. May 16th, 1929, in the banquet room of this hotel, they held the very first Academy Awards. The very first Oscar ceremony took place in the banquet room. Blossom Room. Um, the Roosevelt Hotel. Now, for several years, it's been owned and maintained by the American Society of Cinematographers. See the letters ASC on the gate. Now, any time that you see a movie made here in America, right after the name of the director of photography, you'll see the letters ASC, American Society of Cinematographers. This building is their clubhouse, where they have their meetings and special events and parties, too. A beautiful Victorian mansion right in front of us on a small hill, built in 1908 for a Hollywood banker and developer and his family. Now, for several years, it's been owned and maintained very well by a private magic club called the Magic Castle. Members are magicians and illusionists performing around the country in Las Vegas on those cruise ships. But you'll see here in just a minute, really good view of uh, the Magic Castle as we make our turn here. Oh. There it is. 
Magic Castle. Hollywood has many beautiful churches. One of them is coming up ahead of us on the left. Hollywood United Methodist Church, built in 1929. Locally, it's a historical landmark. It's been seen on television, but used in movies too, like Back to the Future with Michael J. Fox and um, Sister Act and Sister Act Two with Robert Goldberg. Avenue and head back to Hollywood Boulevard. All around us, especially over here on the left hand side, are new buildings. On the left, these are new condominiums or apartment buildings. Right hand side, 2000, this large complex of retail stores and restaurants opened as Hollywood and Highland. About two years ago, a new company called Ovation purchased it and did some remodeling to it. Some of these older buildings on Hollywood Boulevard have um, been restored, remodeled, and they've been opening up now uh, as something new uh, a few years ago, actually. What was a Bank of America building on the left-hand corner over there. They moved out of the building. It was empty for a while before the Ripley, believe it or not, museum took over the corner there. Ripley, believe it or not, was a very popular um, short film presentation, several of those actually, in movie theaters back in the 1930s and 40s. Curiosities, unusual things from all around the world were assembled and photographed by Robert Ripley. He went all around the world finding all these interesting things, and so they were shown in movie theaters around the country. Well, now, Inside this museum, many of those artifacts or photographs of those artifacts are here on display. Just up ahead of us here, again on the right hand side. It's a movie theater that opened in the 1930s. The Hollywood Theater. Now, one interesting thing about the Hollywood Theater when it opened, the owners of the theater decided to have their marquee showing what was playing uh, at the theater on an angle. Before they started this, all the other movie theater marquees were box-like, like the El Capitan that we saw back there, like a box. Here, they came up with the idea of putting it on an angle on the other side and on this side too. So people driving up and down the boulevard could see what was playing at the theater. And it worked very well. Other theaters soon adopted that same marquee design too. Other older buildings along Hollywood Boulevard. Now, five years before Sid Lawman opened up the Chinese Theater, his first theater, here to 1922, was the Egyptian Theater here on the right. Now, the Egyptian Theater is going through an extensive restoration and remodeling. along the boulevard includes some wonderful restaurants. Hollywood's old Italian restaurant is here on the right hand side, just in there, that's called Michelli's. They opened in 1949. Very popular Italian neighborhood restaurant. 
really good too. But these oldest restaurants, hands down, is Samuso and Frank Grill here on the left hand side. They opened in 1919. Wonderful restaurant. During the pandemic, all these restaurants closed. And for a while, it didn't look like the Musso and Frank was going to open at all. That wasn't going to be open. But uh, the family said, no, let's reopen it. So they did. But they're opening it very slowly now. Instead of lunch and dinner right now, they're opening it only for dinner. Certain nights of the week, too. But some of the other older buildings have been restored. Sadly, some of the businesses left. And uh, they haven't come back. New businesses have not opened up yet, so um, so many stores still have the shutters down. Other businesses, their shutters might be down, but uh, they're not just open yet. They don't open maybe on a Sunday. They might not open till 11 o'clock or maybe do. of the Hollywood sign there on the left hand side and uh, too hazy. We'll get other views of the sign. Did you see it? Some people are already set up. Some people are still arriving here and things getting set up for the farmer's market every Sunday. meeting up with their friends here and maybe going to dinner at one of the nearby restaurants but then they would make their way to the local radio stations here in Hollywood located right near this intersection and they'd be in the studios and be part of the audience for the popular radio shows that came here from Hollywood right near the intersection here of Hollywood and Vine. Not only the studios of the radio stations but some of the theaters that were located, some still are, uh, located here, near Hollywood Bank. And yeah, the very famous theater, just up ahead on the left, and then this is the Pantages Theater. Right across the street there. The Pantages Theater opened in 1930. Very popular movie theater, too. And uh, many movies had their premieres there at the Pantages. And for 10 years, the Academy Awards took place here at the Pantages Theater between 1949 and 1959, where they held the Oscars. And in fact, in 1954, the first televised Academy Awards took place here at the Pantages Theater. Now, for several years, it's been owned by the Niederlanders in New York City, and they have restored it, and they use it now for live stage musicals from Broadway to Hollywood. So they already have some musicals lined up already, what they're going to plan for next year and what's going on here. And so um, opening up, we'll have live on stage here, the musical. There's some beautiful homes. But there's one of the entrances there on the left.
and um, up in the hills on the left hand side right up to the park's perimeter some beautiful homes right hand side some more beautiful homes mansions many years ago this was developed into a gated community called Lockwood Park celebrities back then and a very famous director Cecil B. DeMille had a house here in Mansion was here, and um, last time I checked, I think she still owns her actress Anne Carolina Jolie, which is his mansion. Those celebrities too. Here's one of the gates. And as I said, on the left hand side, right up in the hills. Up above the houses here in the Griffith Park. You'll catch a glimpse of a large white building with domed rooftops. The trees up above. Another clearing area here just up ahead around Edgemont Avenue, and you can look up on the left hand side, maybe just a little tiny bit behind you, and up in the hills, and you'll see the Griffith Observatory and Planetarium. Uh, the observatory is a historic landmark. Griffith Park. 4,000 acres of public park land that was donated by Mr. Griffith. Among the other attractions, outdoor amphitheater smaller than the famous Hollywood Bowl. This opened in 1930 and very, very popular for its concerts under the stars. On the left. The observatory is um, this is our cultural landmark. People can drive up here, park their cars, walk up the rest of the way, or we have a small, what they call, dash bus. So we're making it very convenient for people who don't have a car and are visiting Los Angeles. They can take the dash bus all the way up to the observatory. I'll be pointing out where you can catch that bus. Very easy to get to. Here within the park, you'll find all kinds of wonderful places. Further back in the trees, back in there, there's a bird sanctuary. Flying overhead, you might see red-tailed hawks, eagles, falcons, crows, blue jays, and smaller birds, too. Also, can I know when people here, you might see deer they're small, they're called mule deer. Lower mules have coyotes. And Pacific rattlesnake, and squirrels, and chipmunks, and raccoon, and rabbits, and possum. Was open, you can see right above ahead of us here. You can see some people walking across that that um, wall up there. Well, that is actually part of the um, hiking trail that begins in the back of the main parking lot, but then it comes across the, that bridge, that trail up there. But then it starts a real serious trail up to the top of Mount Hollywood. Now, Mount Hollywood is the tallest of the peaks within Griffith Park in the mountain here. It's not a difficult climb at all, but if you reach the top, when you reach the top of Mount Hollywood, the view on a clear day is incredible. You can see the ocean from up there.
now, just around this curve, you'll get some really good glimpses of the observatory. It is a historic cultural landmark, as I said. Opened in 1935. It contains one of the few solar-powered telescopes in the world, in addition to its refracting telescope. It's seen on television, it's been used in movies. Part of the most famous movie was in 1954, Rebel Without a Cause, with actors James Dean, Natalie Wood, Sal Minio, Jim Backus. Two very uh, important scenes in that movie were filmed here at the observatory. The observatory is open six days a week. They're closed on Monday. They're open until 10 o'clock at night. And because Mr. Griffith wanted everybody to enjoy the observatory, general admission is free. So, we'll come up ahead here. Yeah, doesn't look like I'm going to be needing a blue ticket. It's still kind of early for us. Hello. Morning. Okay. All kinds of interesting things up here to take a picture. If you want to be an angel, you can get a picture taken here with one of the angel wings. Yeah. To the right. Way over there across, against the side of the mountain called Mount Lee, there's a Hollywood sign over there. Uh, the observatory is not open just yet. I think it's open, uh, I think it opens at noon. But well, you can still get some nice pictures. Over on the um, sidewalk there, there's a white post. And there's a, um, a bust of actor James Dean commemorating the filming of Rebel, of Rebel Without a Cause. And over here to our left, there is Mount Hollywood. So I said, there's a couple of um, the two different uh, hiking trails. Once you get up to the um, one spot partway up the hill, there are a couple of um, hiking trails and you can use one on either side and both will take you up to the top so what i'm going to do is i'm going to park here for a minute and open the door and uh, you can step out and take a walk around get some pictures <laughs> We're on top of the Griffith Observatory.